What's scarier, a killer who meticulously plans your death or one who wipes you out just because you're in their way? They're both pretty terrifying, but which slasher is smarter? I'm Sloane from Blood Binge, and today we'll be ranking some of the most iconic slashers from dumbest <laughs> to most brilliant. There will be blood. Before we begin, we'd like to just outline a couple rules. One is that obviously we can't fit all the slashers onto a single list, but we've taken 15 of the most iconic that represent a good range of intelligence between them. We'll also only be taking one killer from each franchise. Sorry, Amanda. Finally, we've tried to select more hands-on slashers for this list, meaning that while some supernatural entities will be included, we're looking more at physical deaths than hauntings. So with all that said, let's dive in. First up are our mindless zombies. While not all literally brain dead, these slow slashers are easily manipulated, outwitted, and also outmatched by their victims. What a idiot! Kicking off the list with a hot take, we have Jason Voorhees from the Friday the 13th franchise as our dumbest slasher. Yes, he is a fan favorite, and undoubtedly he's one of the last killers that we'd want to encounter face to face. His brutal nature and resilience to pain make him one of the scariest slashers in movie history. But is he smart? We would argue that no, he's not. Jason is definitely a few fries short of a Happy Meal in the brains department. He does seem to get more calculating as the series progresses, but especially when you look at the early series Human Jason, he just doesn't seem to be the brightest bulb out there. In part two, Ginny is able to confuse him just by being blondish and wearing his mom's sweater. In the final chapter, he's even outsmarted by a little boy pretending to be him. Whether this is due to the trauma of being drowned or had something to do with his vague, pre-existing condition, we don't know. But we can't think of a single killer on this list who's been more outsmarted quite so many times in such ridiculous ways. Following him is Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Whereas Jason's actual mental state is ambiguous, there is little doubt that Leatherface is suffering from some very serious developmental issues. Though both his actor and name changed several times across the franchise, his mentality was always fairly consistent. He's depicted as childishly naive, killing for his own fear of the outside world on the orders of his family. What we feel ranks him a little higher than Jason on the intelligence scale is that he isn't being tricked so much as he's being misled. His family encourages him to kill for food and for fun. He just doesn't seem to know any better. Many of the movies even play into this to paint him as being more sympathetic than the other members of the Sawyer clan. Now let's talk about our next pick, Norman Bates from Psycho. This one is open to some debate. There is definitely a more refined side to Norman and we certainly don't penalize him for any other personalities he has. While he is miles more intelligent than Leatherface, there just isn't enough evidence to support that he's up to par with some of our upcoming picks. Though he is depicted in Bates Motel to have a higher intelligence, we're of course just looking at the classic Anthony Perkins depiction of him in Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. Is he eloquent? Yes. Terrifying? Absolutely. But is he smart? Well, let's just say that he's not smart enough to go toe to toe with some of our more intentioned killers. And on that note, we will be wrapping up this tier with Mick Taylor from Wolf Creek. He is probably one of our most intentioned killers. Much like Norman Bates, he was depicted with more depth and more intellect in the series that was made about his brutal killings than he was in either of the Wolf Creek movies. Still, we won't be taking the episodes into account. Wolf Creek really focuses on his sadism more than any intelligence he might have. This is a knife. And Wolf Creek 2 is interesting. Honestly, he gets quite a bit of credit for being able to live off of the land in the Australian outback. He's also able to lay out more intricate traps for his victims to fall into, get creative with his kills, and develop a hunting method. Next up, we have our agonizingly average. Starting off, we have Billy Loomis from the Scream franchise. We do think he's smarter and more motivated than his partner in crime, Stu. He's also probably the killer that you think of when you see the iconic ghost face mask. But ultimately, he is just a high school student and a crazed murderer. He gets too invested in his own commentary to survive the film he orchestrates. What's the matter, Sydney? You look like you've seen a ghost. 
He isn't quite as self-aggrandizing as Ghostface is later in the franchise, but his narcissism and mommy issues make us question if he knows as much as he thinks he does. Billy is definitely more focused on playing games with his victims than avoiding getting caught. He's also the first of many Scream killers to make the mistake of the villain monologue that ultimately proves to be his downfall. And all just to give Sydney a little extra scare. That being said, some of the games that he plays with his victims and the coordination it takes to set up his timing with Stu's does require some smarts. The fact that he was able to convincingly pose the pair of them as a single killer was not a bad ploy. Considering their means and their inexperience, we're honestly impressed with some of the stunts they pulled. Our next pick is Michael Myers. He's a unique candidate because he could have been either much higher or much lower on the list depending on how you choose to interpret his character. Like Jason, he isn't given dialogue or any internal monologue to let the audience really know what's going through his head. He's gone through several iterations that vary in killing prowess. We really think a case could be made either way. There are a couple things though that have us thinking he's smarter than he may get credit for. One is that he can operate a motor vehicle, something that he must have learned just from watching others drive. Second is the very methodical nature in which he hunts victims. Whereas other killers on this list have their sheer power and stubbornness to survive a SWAT team, or worse, Michael can actually outmaneuver them. Because Michael was institutionalized at such a young age and didn't get a proper education, clearly he has some intelligence. However, it's just being utilized for violence. When you look at how well he's able to hunt his victims and rip them from their hiding places, it's scary to think about what he would be capable of under different circumstances. Next up is Daniel, AKA Candyman from the Candyman franchise. Now we don't know much about Daniel in life before he becomes the Candyman. He was an artist, he died for falling in love with a white woman in the very racist South, and he was killed by a very angry mob. Her death would be a tale to frighten children. What we do know about him is that once he returns as a supernatural killer, he is a force to be reckoned with. To cite his intelligence, we particularly want to look at how he victimized Helen in the first movie. His powers allow him to find her anywhere and compel her to do as he pleases. He doesn't just kill her, however, or take her. There's a very methodical way in which he isolates her to slowly draw her to him of her own volition. He knows who he can rip from her life and who he must drive wedges between to accomplish his end goal. For this frightening bit of emotional manipulation, we feel his placement in this tier is well earned. Now, for one of the only women on this list, let's talk about Brenda Bates from Urban Legend. For starters, she is getting a college education. This means that she has at least some traditional book learning and a desire for more, despite everything she's been through with the death of her boyfriend. There's also the amount of time and effort that goes into her killings. Since her motive is largely revenge, the fact that she goes through so much time and effort to recreate urban legends is pretty impressive. And to her credit, she still seems to get away with it. Another rarity on this list that we feel makes her particularly worthy. Following her with a very different tone is Charles Lee Ray, or Chucky from Child's Play. As frustrating as it can be to admit, Chucky is pretty crafty. The movies may be campy as hell, but putting him into context of the world he's in, you have to admit that this possessed good guy doll has some wits about him. He knows just what needs to be done to save his soul before he can bleed out and is willing to do what it takes to cling to life. Furthermore, he has to figure out how to navigate the world as a doll, which can't be easy. While we wouldn't exactly describe the movies themselves as particularly profound, the killer starring in them has crawled his way up the rankings fair and square. After him is Patrick Bateman. It's a little hard to actually pin down where Bateman should fall on this list, especially with Hip to be Square going through our heads. He went to the most prestigious schools money could buy, all the way up through Harvard. He's a successful businessman and has already made a name for himself on Wall Street by the age of 27. He has more book learning than almost any other killer on the list, so you may be wondering why he's not at the top of this tier, or maybe even why he's not in the top tier itself. His confession has meant nothing. The ambiguous end left many things, including Bateman's exact level of self-awareness, up for debate. As such, we did show some restraint with his ranking. And rounding out this tier is Freddy Krueger from the franchise A Nightmare on Elm Street. You may be thinking that Freddy isn't the smartest horror villain, and if you're thinking of him from the 2010 remake, you'd be right. But we're just gonna go to our happy places for a few minutes where the movie doesn't exist and really focuses on Robert Englund. Come to Freddy. 
he killed at least 20 children before he was caught, while having both a wife and a daughter. That's not exactly something to brag about, it does imply a certain level of craftiness that didn't go away when he died. It's rare that the killer seems to be so aware of what it takes to constantly be reshaping himself. On that basis, we feel justified in ranking him as the best of the average. And finally, we have our evil geniuses. These masterminds plot and plan some of the most gruesome deaths for their unwitting victims. First off in this section is Pinhead, also known as the engineer from Hellraiser. It's a little difficult to gauge his intelligence, especially looking at just the first movie, because he does have somewhat of an upper hand. Being an immortal being with so many hellish powers does give him that advantage in so many regards. Much like Freddy, however, he did have a human form. The mortal man, Spencer, didn't show quite as much practical use of intellect. He ended up succumbing to baser desires before turning into the terrifying Cenobite that we all know and recognize. In this form, he has an immortal's grasp on philosophical matters that we can only ever dream of. For this, we feel like he has earned entry into the top tier of intellect, though the averageness of his human form is going to anchor him to the bottom of it. Following him is the titular character of The Collector. You may still be a little unclear on what exactly is going through this guy's mind. We're not too sure ourselves, but we are able to get some ideas about him based on context clues. He does have a massive collection of people that he's abducted, killed, and in some cases just held captive. Since he hasn't been caught yet, that's a definite point in his favor. There's also the location of some of these elaborate traps. We've seen him sneak into a house to booby trap the entire thing in record time. We have also seen him rig a nightclub to absolutely massacre the inhabitants before coming away scot-free. He is terrifying, fearless, and not doing this without an impressive amount of foresight. Next up is Dr. Hefner from The Human Centipede. Ugh. The less we say about Dr. Hefner and his experiments, the better, both for our sanity and yours. But he is a doctor and a killer and probably one of the most demented villains on our list. So we sort of have to at least bring him up. He comes up with an insane medical theory that he just has to test, combining the digestive tracts of three humans to create, you guessed it, a human centipede. For whatever reason, this concept is too disgusting to just remain on paper. He feels the compulsion to really test it out. Peter. The fact that he does ultimately prove the theory, to a degree at least, shows us that despite being mentally unhinged, he's also fairly intelligent, in literally the worst way. Following him is Jigsaw from the Saw franchise. Jigsaw refers to John Kramer and not any of the ill-advised protégés. He possesses not only great mechanical prowess, but a frighteningly accurate grasp of the human mind. His trap designs alone would be more than enough to cement his placement in this category of the list. I've never murdered anyone in my life. The decisions are up to them. So who comes above him? Well. Only one man could. Our choice for the smartest slasher villain is Dr. Hannibal Lecter. Notice the doctor in front of his name? The license to practice medicine definitely helped us make this decision. Like with Kramer, there's a highly psychological component to who and how Lecter kills. He's able to manipulate those around him as though it were nothing. Dr. Lecter seems to be good at whatever he sets his mind to. Unfortunately for his victims, that thing just happens to be killing sometimes. And that's a wrap! Let us know in the comment section who you think the dumbest horror movie killer is. We've got plenty of new videos in the works, so let us know what topics we should cover next. Do us a huge favor and like this video, as well as hit that notification bell so you know whenever we upload a new video to Blood Binge, where we satisfy your thirst for all things horror. Thanks for watching!